What's going on guys? My name is Dan Davis and I'm the creative director here on danstube.tv which is Australia's number one drone YouTube channel and today I'm checking out the Airu Pro which is an Australian drone. Very excited to let you guys know my thoughts on this. Very keen to see an Australian manufacturer or drone company coming to the field with something very exciting. So the Aero Pro is available right now. Definitely make sure to check the links in the description below to check it out. Uh, this drone is very unique, right? It's trying to be something different to what we've seen in the past. Now, some of its big calling cards, right? Some of the big standout features here, uh, the key selling points, if you want to call it that, is its wind resistance huge it can handle up to 50 kilometer winds i literally flew today and the gusts were 45 kilometers so at times wind was 45 kilometers this thing could handle it like a champ it really handles the sky beautifully on top of that it's got a payload rating of one kilogram so that means that it can carry one kilogram it's literally got like a little mechanism here you can press the button here to actually um, connect on the payload or through the actual um, the app or on the controller there's an option to connect the payload or release the payload does a really great job one kilogram is what it can carry really impressive stuff to see this launch into the sky and hold that much weight is very cool to see the other thing that's great about the Aero Pro is its battery life so they're saying 45 minutes of battery life per battery with the kit I've got I do have two batteries which is really great battery life is great so 45 minutes is the quoted time obviously you're never going to get the full amount that they quote because that's in an ideal scenario but still really impressive flight performance from the unit and it can handle any sort of wind condition it's extremely stable in the sky which is really nice to see another big calling card is their wave sync technology which gives us 2.7k of live video feed and we also get 10 kilometers of range so 10 kilometers of range is very nice to see and that 2.7k video feed is also really nice you get more realistic representations of what you're actually going to get when you put it on your computer we also get digital zoom as well which is again very nice to see up to six times so it does become extremely pixelated and almost unusable at that point well it is unusable at that point for for me like i'm not going to be shooting things in, in six times digital zoom that's not the go-to i'm just going to leave it in the default but i see the digital zoom as more of like a scouting option now this drone here the aero pro seems to be heavily heavily focused on the fishing market so it's ideal if you want to connect up your bait and your your like fishing line to the actual drone itself you've got the payload option so you connect it all up you've got everything in the kit very easy to connect whatever it is that you need to connect up and then the idea would be you would fly the drone out over the ocean and then release the payload which would be releasing the bait releasing the fishing line and then fly the drone back so in those kind of scenarios phenomenal because when you're over the open water wind speeds are normally insane so to have that 45 minutes of flight time to have 2.7k video feed um, and to also have you know the, the 45 minutes is huge like 45 minutes of flight time is great but the 50 kilometer wind speed resistance is also huge when you're over like open water over the ocean so for the fishing market this is really cool so the video and photo quality from the Aero Pro is good it, it's decent but it's definitely not the best I've seen. And they're definitely not going for that. Like this isn't trying to be a cinema drone, but it does have a three axis gimbal. It can capture 4K video, which is really nice to see. The CMOS sensor on it is a one over 2.6 inch CMOS sensor. So it's a decent little camera system on it and it can capture 12 megapixel stills. So it's a very usable camera. It does a good job in most scenarios. I will say though that occasionally in auto mode it can look a little bit muddy almost so i would suggest going into the pro mode and playing around with the colors you do have a bunch of options for the settings in there the white balance the contrast saturation sharpness all that stuff so you can really tweak the color and what you're getting out of the the image itself but i find that in auto occasionally it can be a little bit muddy and if lighting conditions change drastically, then the quality can change, or maybe not the quality, but the color can change, right? So it can kind of shift a little bit. So I would suggest playing around with that in most scenarios, but again, it's usable for most people. And if you're getting it for the payload rating, if you're getting it for fishing, or if you're getting it for payload to deliver something, for example, then it's good for that. 
I don't know how many people like in a casual sense are going to be delivering things with the drone, but definitely for fishing. It makes a lot of sense if you want to be fishing off the land, but you want to take your bait out or your fishing line out really far. Amazing for that because it's got that awesome wind resistance. It's got the payload rating, so you can carry quite heavy bait if you've got like a large fish on there, for example. Really easy stuff. Another really cool thing about the battery here is that it can handle extreme temperatures. So anywhere from minus 10 Celsius to 40 Celsius, the battery is going to be perfectly fine. Now, really hot today, it handled it perfectly well. One thing I was curious about, I guess, is being the black design, as much as I love it, it looks so sleek. It doesn't fold, so that's how it comes, but it fits perfectly into the bag. Really solid design, but I was curious, like, is the black design of it just going to absorb all the heat and make it really hot, damage the battery or anything like that? I had no issues with it. It does have a fan that kicks in, or it probably has a few fans, but there's one very clear visible fan here that does kick in and uh, makes a bit of noise as it's trying to disperse the heat. There's a few little, um, little slits here to release heat and whatnot. There's little vents everywhere. So it does a really great job of dispersing the heat. And I found that the black design wasn't an issue. It didn't seem to get hot, like definitely wasn't hot to the touch or anything like that. And it was great when it was in direct sunlight. And again, flies phenomenally well. The huge motors on it are great, huge propellers on it. It's quite like a heavy duty drone. Like it feels heavy duty when you're holding it and it definitely handles the sky. I would say that this is probably one of the more stable drones that I've tested. Just, it just hovers, it just holds its position in that wind. It does a great job. It doesn't get knocked around too much um, and it does a really great job. A few things that I would like to see improved. Now the app itself is great, really cool app. And I'll get into some of the features that we have through the app. There are some intelligent flight modes in there. Uh, overall, the app's great, very reliable in most situations. There are a few little issues I'm having though. So. One of the biggest issues I'm having is that I have to press the record button multiple times. It won't just start immediately for me. Now it will say like operation error or it will just error out on me. But the amount of times that I'll have to press the record button and make sure that it's recording and it isn't, I have to do it again. Sometimes I have to do it three times before it will actually start recording. That was not the greatest experience for me. Now that didn't happen every single time. Sometimes I'd press it and it records straight away but sometimes it would just error out on me and occasionally it just wouldn't even record. It just wouldn't work for me. So sometimes I'd have to land the drone, power it down, power it back on again. Um, but this didn't happen all the time. Very simple to fix with future software updates, but that's just something to mention because I'm used to something that just works, right? You press the button and it works. It does exactly what you want it to. Now this wasn't the case with other things. So like with the, the intelligent flight modes, they seem to be very responsive. So the waypoints, for example, very responsive. Every time I'd touch a waypoint, it would add it for me. I could change the, the height of each waypoint, change the focus point. And that was really intuitive and responsive. And when I did the waypoint missions, it was fine. It was flawless in those kind of situations. Even when I did the uh, the tracking mode. So there's both active track or the, the tracking mode, which is like a, a software based tracking mode. And then you also have following. So both of those worked phenomenally well. I was really impressed with them. The follow mode is when it's using the signal from your phone and the controller to track that, that signal, so I can go completely out of line of sight, I can go underneath some trees, and it's just going to keep following me. That worked flawlessly. Even the active track, which is the software-based AI tracking, that worked really well. I was able to track cars and people and boats perfectly fine, no issues with it at all. But again, occasionally I found that if the drone was moving, it wouldn't record, so I'd have to stop the drone moving and then press the record button. So one of those things that needs to be improved with software, um, but for me it didn't ruin the experience because it worked most of the time, it was just occasionally uh, that would happen for me and that's something I'd like to see improved. Now, when we look at the controller, it's a really nice controller, simple design on it. It's got all the main buttons you need. It's got the record button, the shutter button for photos. You've got a scroll wheel for the gimbal, uh, and you've also got that payload release there. So that's very handy to release the payload, obviously. So overall, the build quality of the controller is really nice. It's got all the functionality you need. You've got the removable sticks. You've got this little tray that pulls out and then you can pull it out to extend it. Now this does feel a little bit plasticky for my liking, but it works perfectly fine and does exactly the job. Everything else feels really heavy duty. The antennas are nice and long and flexible and you can move them in any sort of direction that you need to. All the buttons feel really nice. Uh, so overall, really solid 
controller. I guess just this little shelf here, you can even hear it as it's kind of like getting caught in different positions. That could be definitely improved with future versions, but it does the job and most people aren't going to care about it. You can kind of tuck the cable away as well, which is really nice. And there's little rails that you can um, put everything into or little holders to put the cables in so it's nice and flush. Really cool design overall. The performance from the controller was great. Um, everything worked as you would want it to work as I was using the controller. A little bit fiddly at times with movements. You gotta get used to, like any drone, it's a new feeling. So you gotta get used to more finer movements I find with this. If you move like just a little too quickly, it can kind of like, the camera moves a little bit odd. Um, so you just gotta get used to more finer movements. So that's actually good for a lot of people. People rely a lot of the time on like uh, software or they rely on the product to be just really reliable straight off the bat. But I would say that you've just gotta get used to some finer movements and then you can capture some really cool stuff. The video and photo quality though, like I said earlier on, have been great from the unit. It's definitely not designed to be a cinema drone. But it's great, it's a great camera system. Um, the footage looks good, the stabilization is great in most situations. Again, occasionally the color can be a little bit funny, but the way to fix that is just to always have it in pro mode and make sure that you've tweaked the colors before you start flying or, or tweaked the camera before you start flying. But overall, really happy with photos and videos from it. Happy with how it handles a payload, like when it's flying, it's very reliable and responsive when it's holding a payload. So that's awesome to see because that's one of its big selling points. And like I kind of mentioned at the beginning, the battery life and the flight performance, like the wind resistance, are some of the biggest uh, calling cards here, some of the biggest like key selling points of this drone and why you would want it. So the Aero Pro is a heavy duty drone and it's definitely designed for that rugged lifestyle. Like if you're into fishing and camping and exploring, something like this is going to be really cool and would stand out from the competition because of those things I've mentioned. It's a very heavy duty, sturdy drone. It can handle the sky perfectly well. It's got great flight performance in different conditions. So like the different lighting conditions, the different temperatures, uh, different wind conditions, all of that, it's perfectly fine. It can track and follow you. So if you're in a four wheel drive, you can put it in follow mode and you don't have to worry about the issues of the active track mode where if you go under a tree, for example, and it loses you, it's just just going to keep following you in the follow mode. So you've got that option. The follow mode's really cool. Waypoints is also a really cool feature. And especially if you're into fishing, perfect to be able to save the drop point. So if you fly out to a certain point and you're like, oh, there's a reef there, or there's a big dip, you know, where it's perfect for fish, then you can actually save that drop point. So it's gonna save it so the next time you go out, you can go straight to that same location and repeat the same fishing experience. Phenomenal for stuff like that. Even the same with the waypoints, maybe you wanna to go to different points, you can replicate that every single time. So really impressive stuff here. I'm, I'm impressed with the kit. I'm impressed with how the drone flies. And uh, it's great to see an Aussie company in the drone market. So the Aero Pro definitely has a niche in the market. And I think that a lot of people are gonna be impressed by this if you're into that rugged lifestyle. This is probably the drone to check out. Uh, if you're not interested in other kind of gimmicks or other features that other drones might have. This drone has a core offering and it just does what it says. So check it out. Uh, we'll have those links down below. I appreciate all the support. I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.